Okay, video number four, we are going to take a look at basic grouping and layering that we are going to have inside of Microsoft Visio. My name is Joel. Once again, we're going to be working from previous videos. Watch the videos in order. Then when you get to here, it's going to go and help you catch up. If not, you know, some of this stuff, it's going to seem like we're jumping ahead without explaining, but it has been explained. It's just back there somewhere for you to go and finish watching. So with no further ado, once I find that mouse, once again, we're going to kick back into our Microsoft Visio. So we've done a bunch of things already. We have taken a look at basic shapes. We've done some alignment. We then got into fragmentation and into a little bit of unionization. And now what we're going to work with is going to be grouping and layering. And the whole point of grouping and layering is that right now, if I try to take this cylinder that we built and move it, ah, worst, if you take a look at that, this thing falls apart because it's not tied together. I'm going to hit Control Z so it goes right back to where it's supposed to go and become. And I'm going to go through a grouping section. I'm going to grab all three of these. Now you can either go and drag a catch bar over top like that, or you can click on one, hold down Control, click on a second, click on a third, and select you know components one at a time to go and group them. Either way works. We'll do this. We grab those. What we're then going to do is we're going to go to this grouping bar up top over here. And what grouping does when we hit group is it now treats this as if it were a single object. Not only can we start dragging it around, we can also start to go and rotate it. Look at that. You know, we can uh, spin that thing around. We can align this thing off on angles we can actually use. Remember that size and position that we've introduced before. If we wanted this thing to be a cylinder at 45 degrees, we could go and type in 45 degrees and this thing is going to go off to that sort of an angle over there. It's very handy to have it because it is now going to allow you to go and create components. We can create a few of these. We can start distributing these things around, you know, a drawing or something like that. And we have got grabbable components. If I need to take them apart, I can do an ungroup. If for whatever reason I wanted to take them apart, particularly when working with single uh, components of it. For example, if I take this one over here that I did a copy paste, and if I try to change just the color on one of them, you'll note that everything goes the same color because it's all part of the same group. Whereas if I only wanted the outside to become yellow, I would have had to ungroup this thing and then go yellow like that. Alternatively, there's another method called drilling down when dealing with a group. We'll try it on this one over here. This is a complete group that we have over here. When drilling down, what you need to do is you need to click once that selects the whole shape and then click on a component inside of that shape. And you'll note that my outside bounding box still shows, but now it's showing the smaller bounding box of just that component. And so I would be able to modify just that component inside of here. Very useful for us to go and have components as groups, particularly some components like this screw that we built in the previous one over there. Otherwise, when we try to move the screw, we're just going to end up, you know, ripping sections out of these things. I'll undo and bring that one back. Instead, we want to go and group these things together so that they are going to stay properly for us. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is just going to be layers. Layers are going to go and be useful when we have got multiple components that we want to go and bring forward or bring to reverse. Every time that you create something new inside of Visio, whatever you created comes to the front layer. It's just a law. The newest thing is always to the front. In fact, it's not always just the newest thing. It is actually the newest action. So the last action I'd done was draw an ellipse. But if I were to take this and this, and if I were to go and use that unionized tool that we had before, all of a sudden, creating that new shape through unionization brings this to the front. Particularly when dealing with unionization, this can sometimes be tricky because you will go and unionize a couple of objects and all of a sudden it feels like you've lost components of your drawing. Most cases, you haven't actually lost components of your drawing. You've just brought that unionized shape to the front and your other components, let's take this one, we'll just hide that back there, you know, are still going to go and be in the back. We'll try that one more time just to explain what that's like. So over here, I've got one rectangle. I'm going to go and take another rectangle here. We'll, we'll make it just that one there. We'll bring that one inside there. That's a new one, so it goes to the front of that. And we'll make one more rectangle over there. If I were to go and take this rectangle and this rectangle, okay, I have not selected that middle one there, but if I were to take these two, and if I were to go and unionize them, what you'll note will happen is that they've now come to the front. That other rectangle still exists, but it's at the back. In order to find it, what we have to do is work with our layers. We've got layers for bring to front or bring to back. If there's something behind it, we can either click around blindly till we 
happen to lock onto it sometimes it works and then you could go and bring this thing to the front which is what i just did there or i'll just undo that what you could do is take the shape that's blocking it and take the shape that's there send it to the back so that you can then access whatever is behind it okay that's your basic unionization or sorry your basic uh grouping and your basic layer just remember the last time that you do something unionization fragmentation or anything like that is going to bring it always to the front so just be very careful even grouping stuff will bring it to the front 